need to dwell in Christ Jesus. Go, go look through the New Testament, see how many times it says that we are in Christ Jesus. He's got to be your dwelling place. And you need to dwell in him who is the word, the word made flesh and dwelt among us. Because it is that that makes you a disciple and causes for you to know the truth. And the truth shall make you free in these days of lies. Mm. The world abounds in lies. But you'll know the truth when you dwell in that word, when you are in Christ Jesus, the word. Mm. For he'll give you his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. But well, we could talk about Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. Because that was something that, right. that Satan tried to tempt him with. Actually, he wasn't tempting him with that. He was tempting him with pride. Mm. Remember, Jesus was a man. That's right? right? Mm -hmm. Truly a man. And Satan knows the failings and the weaknesses of man. Yes. And pride hits the top of the list. Yes. So he was saying, if you're really God... Prove it. Throw yourself down. Jesus said, no, no, no. no. You don't do that. You don't put God to the test. Mm -hmm. You don't need to put God to the test. When there's a need, he'll be there. That's right. Thirteen. You will tread upon the lions and cobra, the long, young lion and serpent. You will trample down. Jesus said, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Luke 10, 19. Do you believe this stuff? Are you a Bible-believing Christian? Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up, Alice and I grew up in New York City. And there, we didn't have to worry about snakes and scorpions very, no, very much. <laughs> but then God sent us down into the jungle in Central America, and we lived out in the bush. And we had. And we got an opportunity to put the Word of God to see yes. if indeed... It's true. Because we would wake up at night and have scorpions in the bed with us. We encountered so many snakes, but God protected us. Yes, he did. I mean, Alice, I would run out. I don't have enough time to tell you all of the accounts, but I, I promise you that God was there and protected us. Amen. He gave us authority over those serpents and yes, scorpions. He because he says in verse 14, Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. It's about relationship. And he will call upon me, and I will answer him and be with him in trouble. This is about prayer. We're studying about prayer. Call upon him, and he will answer. Amen. He'll be with you in the trouble. He'll not leave you nor forsake you. He will rescue yes. you and honor you. Calling upon the Lord. That's prayer. With a long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. Do you believe the Lord? Do you believe that he will deliver you from evil? Do you believe that you will see his salvation? Do you trust in his word? Paul wrote, we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. The Apostle Paul in Philippi, you know the account in Philippi, right? Go to Acts chapter 16 and, and read this. Because he disrupted business yes, yes. by casting a demon out of a little girl, right? Mm -hmm. He was beaten. With along with Silas and thrown into the deepest, darkest part of the, the, the prison. There he was. Mm -hmm. A prison. A place of horror. A place of misery. Yes. A place where the only sound you heard was men weeping and crying and wailing and moaning. Except, except, Paul was thrown into that prison. Silas was thrown into that prison. And it says around midnight, they were singing prayers. They were saying prayers and singing praises to God. Mm -hmm. They weren't moaning. They weren't groaning. Yeah. They were thanking God because they gave him thanks in all things. Do you remember that Jesus said that if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. When Paul was singing praises, when Silas was singing praises, there in the midst of the darkness of that horror of that prison, what was Jesus doing? Well, he made a promise, and he watches over his word to perform it, just like I said. Okay. So when Paul was confessing him, Jesus went before the Father and said, Do you see my servant Paul? Do you see him? Jesus has emotion. He wept. He got excited. Now Jesus got excited. Yes. He got excited to see the faithfulness of Paul. So he was, he, he's, he's saying to the Father, Do you see my servant? The angels got excited. Because when Jesus gets excited, I promise you the angels get excited. They were having a hallelujah ho down up in heaven. They were jumping up and down and praying. And you know what happened then? The earth shook. Yes, it did. Heaven shook. Amen. The earth shook. And the gates, bars flew open. The, gates the chains open. fell off. 
and God used that as a testimony that lasts all time, as long as the word lasts, and the word's going to last forever. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the kind of deliverance that God makes. God can deliver you. It doesn't matter how deep in the prison. It doesn't matter how dark the prison. It doesn't matter how strong the bars. It doesn't matter how strong the chains. God will shake the earth if he has to to set you free because he has made a promise to you. He will deliver you from evil. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's exciting. Have a testimony. Though the earth shall move and change And the mountain move to the sea I shall not be afraid The Lord of hosts is with me 